Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CEO of America's SAP Users Group, Jeff Scott. Well, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sitting over here. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Hey, hi. Got some people in front of me. They're very nervous. Um, I began my journey with SAP, like many of you, right here in these seats. And I figured today would be a great opportunity to come back here and begin our conversation this afternoon where this all began for me as a customer. So uh, hi, everyone. Um, how you doing? Good afternoon. It's been a big day for everyone. I wanted to say hi to a couple people, so hi. What's your name? Cheryl. Cheryl, where are you from? Uh, New Jersey, Johnson New & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson. How many sapphires for you? First one. First one. Congra Let's give her a round of applause for that. First one. Congratulations. What's the one thing you want to get out of today? I want to really learn how to secure S4 HANA. Secure S4 HANA. How about that, folks? I think there's a lot of people who want to hear the same thing. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. So this afternoon, I want to talk about all of you. Because make no mistake, all of this technology that we're talking about this week here in Orlando would not be possible without all of you in this room. So let's start this afternoon by giving ourselves a round of applause for getting it done. You know, I love meeting a lot of people, so hi, I'm Jeff. What's your name? Reggie. Reggie, where are you from? Colorado. Whereabouts? Colorado Springs. Colorado's down south, Colorado Springs. Great weather. I spent some time up in Fort Collins. You doing good today? Doing great. What are you here for this week? Um, I'm here to learn all I can about SAP. And how many years of Sapphires? How many Sapphires? And ASA, I should say ASA Annual Conference. How many for you? I'm a Sapphire virgin. Two, oh, wow. Wow. Two of them. Wow, that's unusual. Uh, show of hands. How many have uh, first year Sapphires? Welcome. Wow. How many have been here three or more years? How many are cresting 10? All right. Congratulations. Give yourselves a round of applause. Reggie, stand on up. Good to see you again. Cheryl, stand on up. Let's get a picture together. They had no idea this was coming. Kayla, come on in. Let's, let's, let's step this way. We have some other great people in the audience today. This is Sharon Kaiser. And James Johnson, they're both members of the ASA board. They'd like to say hi to you guys as well, because it's fun to make connections here today. So one last question, Reggie, Cheryl, we have Soledad O'Brien here today in Bear Grylls. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. Would you yeah. like to meet him? Yeah. All right, where's Kayla? Kayla, let's take him back and say hi. Go on, go ahead. Isn't that fun? At ASUG, our mission is to help you and your organization get the most value from your investments in SAP. The best way to do that here this week in Orlando is by attending one of the 2,000 education sessions that are here in this building. Let's take a look. Cool, huh? Um, if you have a Mac like Tim Cook talked about this morning, you may know this picture. This is El Capitan, or El Cap for short. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's located in Yosemite National Park, California. And as you can see, it is one of the most stunning landscapes on this planet. El Cap is the size of three Empire State Buildings stacked one on top of the other. And there's a guy there. That's Alex Hinald. Alex is an awesome climber. While professional guides recommend four days for good climbers to scale El Cap, Alex did it in three hours and 56 minutes. And the reason for that is he didn't want to hit four hours. <laughs> it's true. 
Unbelievably, he climbed from the bottom to the top of that 3,600 foot sheer granite rock face with no ropes or safety gear, hand over hand, foot over foot. This is a style of climbing called free soloing. And no one, no one had ever done that on El Cap before. What Alex did is an incredible feat. But he didn't just get up one morning and say, hey, let me go, let me go climb El Cap. I'm going to do that today. No, he didn't do that. He made a serious commitment. He started with a dream nearly 10 years earlier and made that dream a reality through determination, relentless practice, and true grit. While Alex ultimately made it up that sheer granite rock face alone, he didn't get there alone. He was part of a network of climbers who guided him. Together, they spent more than two years preparing, climbing El Cap together, mapping out a meticulous route, and pouring over every single detail over and over again until it became second nature. Because if you're free soloing, it is about perfect execution or certain death. Alex worked hard to get to the top of his game. And being at the top of his game got him to the top of El Cap. At his personal best, Alex was prepared to do the extraordinary. And that's what I want to talk to you about this afternoon, reaching your pinnacle. Because your personal best is more important than ever. We all know that it's tough out there. The speed of technology is changing. Technology is being embedded into the very fabric of our lives. Again, as Bill and Tim Cook, 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 I got that out, talked about earlier today, look at that iPhone, look at that Android device and the amount of data that's in it. Speed of technology is accelerating. It's with us from the time we get up in the morning until the time we go to bed at night. You, all of you, are at the epicenter of this tectonic change. You are critical to making all of this work. And because of that, you need to feel prepared, confident, and resolved. SAP absolutely, positively moves the world forward with its software. But that doesn't happen without every single one of you in this room. The stakes are just that high. And that's why ASUG is here. ASUG has your back. We are your elite team that can provide a path for you to your personal best. ASUG helps you to be more knowledgeable, to make better decisions because you're tuned into where SAP is headed, to find success faster because you're better prepared, to become more efficient so you have time to focus on innovation and what's coming down that road in front of you. This afternoon, I do want to spend some time talking about innovation. In our ASUG annual State of the Community survey, you told us how important innovation is to you. You've told us that your ability to be innovative has a huge impact on your job satisfaction and even how long you decide to stay in a particular role. But here's the rub, folks. While we talk about wanting to be innovative, we're not actually doing it. Because if you look behind me, two-thirds of our time is spent getting the day-to-day -day done, which leaves only one-third of our time for planning and innovating for the future. I don't know what you think, but I certainly look at these numbers, and I know that these don't get us to our personal best. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. A little bit of yes. Okay? So we do need to find the time to innovate. And that requires some discipline. Some discipline to decline a few meetings, put your Twitter, Slack, email, and phone on pause so that you can spend time brainstorming for next year, next month, next decade. It's a long time, but we need to think about that. And innovation shouldn't be a solitary exercise. Innovative ideas can come from conversations with each other. 
there are thousands of us here this week. And I bet there are a number of us here in this room this afternoon who have some amazing ideas. Let's build off of those ideas together and let's move our SAP community forward. But unlocking those ideas requires a critical first step. You have to be willing to connect. Yes, I know many of you and I've been in your shoes and a lot of us at times are mavericks who want to go it alone, but don't. We solve problems faster together. And here in Orlando this week, this is the perfect place to connect. If there's a relationship you're looking to build or you just want to get some direction to get started, ASUG will help you find that essential connection. This is what we are here to do because we know that these relationships are critical to your success. This week, you're gonna hear a lot about products and services and solutions. ASUG is here to help provide you expert guidance so that you can get to the best business outcomes. At ASUG, we are a network of 130,000 individuals, most of you. And at ASUG, we will build your network and lead you towards making more possible. Listen, I know that everyone's path will be different. But with ASUG, you can access information in whatever form you prefer, such as face-to-face -face events that give you access to a regional network, think tanks that facilitate idea exchanges, peer exchanges at the executive level, on-demand webcasts, or conferences and courses through ASUGU, ASUG experience events, and eventful conferences. Make no mistake, ASUG's network is strong capable and diverse, and it's here to elevate your performance, getting you closer to your personal best so you get more value from your SAP investments. Value that makes your day-to-day -day simpler so that you can make tomorrow possible. Okay, I talked earlier about Alex and how being at his personal best got him to the top of LCAP. I want to spend a moment talking about my personal best. I started my career as an accountant, but because I've always loved technology, I became a systems analyst, and then a project manager, and then through hard work and commitment and a little bit of luck, I became a CIO. As a CIO, I got the chance to implement SAP. And like most of us here, that decision had some great successes, and a few setbacks, just a few. I've had some projects that didn't go according to plan for a lot of reasons, and I think we all share that common experience together. But my network, my relationships, has been an essential part of my success. I've had a mentor who hired me twice at two different companies, and that relationship absolutely helped me get to where I am today. Because it's not just what you know, it's who you know. It's about building your connections with others to make the impossible achievable. And my achievements culminated in me having the good fortune to become the CEO of this great organization, ASUG. At my personal best, what I strive for every day, what motivates me is that we as SAP professionals are at our very best. I've been in your seats. I'm passionate and motivated in helping all of you reach the heights you want to reach. And I know that ASUG is an essential component of your professional toolkit. There are real rewards for committing to your journey to your personal best. You'll be more confident. You'll be prepared for that next step in your career. You'll be recognized as a difference maker. This week is all about us gaining footholds together. So here are some action items. Be courageous. Connect with someone you've never met before, just like I did a few minutes ago. Take a bold idea back to your team. 
challenge yourself to become expert enough to lead an education session here next year. And remember that your road to your personal best doesn't end here this week. Tap into ASUG's powerful network. ASUG is here to help you be the best SAP professional you can be. Let's dig deep together for ourselves, our futures, and our organizations. All of you are moving your organizations forward. You are solving really tough problems. You are converting the promise of all of this technology into reality. You are the power behind SAP. Thank you. Let's take a look at an example of one company's success. At Canadian Blood Services, achieving their personal best just happens to be a matter of life and death. Customer service and customer experience is paramount to what we do in every aspect of it, from the beginning, through the process, and even, even once it's done and once they're gone. The outcome of that is that piece of you is going into somebody else to save their life. That's what the whole purpose is. So it's a full chain and it's a full cycle that, that goes through. Technology is actually pervasive in our whole operation. From a donor perspective, we depend on appointments. So we actually invite donors to make appointments to come in and donate blood. Having children at home and having to leave them, I, I need to know that I'm doing something that's going to make a difference. So I have no problem waking up and coming to work every day and going home if I'm working late hours or anything like that, knowing that I'm doing it for a good cause, for a good reason. ASUG is a great place uh, to interact with other users on SAP and how they're progressing and how they're moving forward with SAP. And watching my team kind of grow and innovate and kind of spread their wings in terms of integrating systems and uh, different technologies together to deliver an excellent user experience, to deliver an inspiring user experience is wonderful. Our vision is to help every patient, to match every need, and to serve every Canadian. We've managed to drive that online engagement from 4% in 2014 to 54% today, and we're well on track to achieving 60, possibly 65% online engagement by the end of this fiscal year. There's tools, there's process, there's inventory management, but at the end of the day, it's all about people. What a great story from Canadian Blood Services. Let's give them a round of applause. As Bill discussed this morning, the acquisition of Qualtrics is a major step change for SAP. Here to talk to us more about, the, about Qualtrics is their president, Zig Serafin, and a moving thing. I don't want to trip on it. Zig, good to meet you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Is this an How's IoT it? device? This is apparently some device. Um, this is your first Sapphire. It is. How are we doing? All right. So let's get started today. Let's hear about you and your personal best and, you know, your role at Qualtrics. All right. Well, uh, first off, it's an honor to be here. So thank you. Great to have you. For having me. And uh, I really, really put a lot of value into what this community is doing. I asked uh, how long uh, ASUG's been around. I heard it's 27 years, yep. which is uh, it's even that much more of an honor to be here. I joined uh, Qualtrics about three years ago from Microsoft after 17 years. And uh, frankly, your personal best story about mentors and networks and people very much relates uh, I ended up in the job that I'm in today, leading uh, product and uh, our, all of our customer work and partnerships around the world at Qualtrics, a lar largely because of people that I've gotten in over the years and mentors who I've come to rely on for advice and, and direction. And so, you know, I put a lot of value into what this community is doing. Uh, my job at Qualtrics is to partner with people like yourselves. Um, ultimately, the magic of what our purpose and mission is as a company is ultimately to create experiential moments 
that make a difference for what your purpose and your organization is about. Sometimes that's a business, sometimes those of you that are in healthcare, it's actually making a difference in the life of a patient. In the education sector, it's the, the difference in the lives of students or teachers and their ability to touch people. So I really, really enjoy the opportunity to be able to spend time like this. Well, welcome here. Um, with SAP's acquisition of Qualtrics, longtime customers are hearing the new phrase, X data and O data. What does that mean? So the X data is experience data. And uh, it's really tuning in and understanding the sentiments, the emotions, the perceptions, the feelings, the stated needs, the unstated needs of people. It's the, 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 what goes through our minds around how we make choices about what we're doing. Uh, and this comes through us as consumers, it comes through your suppliers, it comes through employees and how employees feel about what they're doing. Um, it comes through in the context or experience of a patient, uh, for instance, in the hospital area. And the O data, of course, is the world that many of you live in. It's the operational side of the world. And it's the world that over the last, I'd say, what, five to 10 years has been undergoing the digital transformation uh, where people have talked about moving data to the cloud, enabling a far more efficient way of seeing data. Uh, and as such, you have a lot more data to work with. And as such, you can actually run models off of that data. You can actually see a much more connected way in which things work. But making decisions the right way more often, building products in the right way more often, being right more often about how you position your brand, hiring the right employees, that combination of things that actually affect the experience that you end up producing really requires the combination of X and O data to work together. And that's what experience management is about. So, the, you know, obviously the typical attendee here is probably more of an O data person than an X data. You know, there's a transition that's hopefully going to happen. What should the people in this audience start thinking about when they think about the possibilities of X data and the combination of the two? Yeah, so the possibilities are, are great. Uh, you know, we have about 10,000 customers today that we, you know, have had the privilege to be able to work with around the world. Um, and, and what we're finding is that no matter what industry you're in, um, you need to figure out how to become more personal, more connected, to be a better listener, and to be able to take action much more proactively than perhaps what it may have been like, say, 10 years ago. That is the world. Technology is enabling the world to move faster. Technology is enabling the world to make decisions more quickly. You have a lot more data uh, uh, at your fingertips. And so if you look at your own organization, one of the first things that people talk about is, is what are the moments that matter the most for the people that we serve? And how do we know whether we're actually meeting the expectations of those moments or not? And if we're not, how are we correcting the gaps? And how long does it take us to do so, given how we operate? Uh, and so often, you know, the, the starting point is recognizing that how important that is and how does that connect with the strategy of your organization, the purpose of your business, uh, and, you know, how you're actually expecting to achieve results. So if it's actually want to grow revenue, if you want to increase customers, ultimately those are lagging indicators. The leading indicators are, do you understand the moments that matter? Do you understand whether you're actually delivering against them or not? Do you have the right product in the market? If not, what are you doing to correct it? Do you have the right workforce working for you? Are you coaching and rewarding behaviors that are actually going to end up making a difference? And how is that actually taking place as part of the connected system of how you operate your organization, how you op operate your company? Fantastic. And, you know, Zig, when SAP announced the acquisition, and, you know, Ryan uses this word all the time, all in. Yeah. So when the acquisition was announced, from an ASUG perspective, we said, this is really interesting. We're also all in on Qualtrics. So behind us is our uh, graphic and our dashboard on how ASUG looks at customer experience, real-time data, and I'd love for you to, to kind of give us your advice when you look at those graphs and what they should, uh, what they say to you. Yeah, so, you know, here you're looking at um, some data on brand qualities and um, attributes of brand. You're looking at uh, a, an MPS or net promoter score, um, goodwill. I think, you know, the metrics around experience um, differ depending upon what your goals are and what you're trying to do. And often the very first place to start is what I mentioned uh, a bit ago here, which is understand the moments that matter the most for the people that you're, you're serving. And so in the case of ASOG, um, if you consider the things that this community is looking to get out of events like this, right. um, 
what you're looking to get out of events when you come together at the local chapters uh, within your local communities, um, content that the organization ends up producing. Absolutely. Um, I mean, these are all part of expectations that each of you have as a member of this community. You also have expectations of SAP just as much. And so, you know, part of that is actually being clear about the way that you, you know, what you're seeking out to listen to and to hone into, and then what are the expectations you're expecting to then deliver against given what you learn about. And then when you, start, when you turn on the Qualtrics platform, it will start to zero in on, say, key moments of your experience as a stakeholder in this organization. Uh, and for your own organizations, it might be the experience of your customers, for instance, or the experience of the employees that work with you. Those are usually often the starting points, and you've created the mechanics to start to listen and understand. Um, that might happen by way of using different technology approaches to doing so. You've got mobile devices now. You've got kiosks. Um, you have um, the ability to be able now to connect with the silent majority that you might not always be connected to. Social media is coming at all of our organizations and companies, and often people might try to jump at one data point, and that may not be the correct data point. It may not be the statistically relevant data point that actually helps to drive the right action. Once you have that, then you actually start to make that part of your workflow of your, of your, of your organization. So, you know, the way that you might actually drive accountability, the, the, the performance metrics that you ultimately use to use as indicators for what will happen down the road. Uh, and so the mechanics of that often start with understanding the expectations and then listening and then taking action against them. You know, what do you think is the best example of a customer who uses Qualtrics really delivering business value from the insights? What were discovered? What, what stuff did they look at? Or is there a true difference maker for them? Yeah, and that's a, that's a fun question because there's a lot of customer stories across many different industries. And in fact, one of the neatest things is that we get to look at experienced leaders. Um, you know, Ryan Smith mentioned earlier that the number one experienced leader for financial services works with us. And, and um, it's, it's basically part of the secret sauce around what differentiates them within their particular industry. One example I'll share that I can talk about publicly is L.L. Bean. Um, L.L. Bean's an interesting company. Um, they're using three of the four core capabilities of the experience management platform, customer experience, uh, product experience, and in the brand experience area. Um, you know, and some examples of how they're doing it. In the customer experience area, every time that a customer ends up interacting with the store, physically or digitally, uh, they're able to monitor how well they're doing. And they can benchmark that against other stores and even across comparable um, stores that are in the industry. Uh, and they use that to be able to coach and develop their people um, and actually make sure that they're doing the job that's expected. They also use that to be able to to determine whether the experience that they're enabling within the store or digitally is actually meeting the, the, the expectations that they've set out for themselves and for their brand. The second area is around product experience. Um, they you know, are using the system to be able to uh, understand and uncover areas of demand and do a better job in decisions in their product development life cycle and as well as their supply chain. You know, one example I heard about recently is that they ended up ordering three times of a larger order for a particular fleece that they had coming into the market uh, once they realized what the opportunity was. And that actually was something that normally would have taken to test over six months, took them six weeks. Uh, and so it's actually reducing, you know, increasing the speed at which they can experiment and learn and make decisions. And the last one is around brand, um, where they're testing using the ability to be able to test advertising in new markets um, they measure the value of different messages. Uh, they came up with a new campaign called Be an Outsider. Uh, and that came by just understanding and knowing their markets more effectively and then doing, using the system to be able to do brand tracking across different markets. Again, all of these things, they don't work independently. Um, you know, the decisions you make on brand ultimately affects the customer experience and vice versa. What you do with the customer experience affects your brand perception. And so it's a connected system that affects supply chain decisions, that affects pricing decisions, that affects the workflow that they're running inside their retail store locations. And all of these things I'm describing are now things that the CEO of L.L. Bean is looking at on, 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 uh, on, on his desktop and on his boardroom dashboard around how he's running his business. And it's a shared responsibility that he has with his uh, leadership team. So that's an example, and Great there are example. many like that. Thank you. As we wrap up, Zig, what's the one thing that you'd like the audience this afternoon to take away with respect to Qualtrics and experience management? 
Yeah, so experience management, it's not just a piece of technology. You know, and I'm not here to pitch a piece of technology. Um, it's really a strategy, it's a movement uh, that will absolutely separate leaders within industry sectors from followers. Um, if there's one thing that I've seen consistently as I've met with many companies and organizations around the world, which has been a privilege for me over the last few years as I've been part of Qualtrics, is the fact that people are looking to figure out how to be more personal and proactive at scale in the way that they perform in their local markets and in their businesses. That requires a skill set. It requires um, understanding how the strategy that you're setting at the top level in the boardroom connects with the reality of the actions that are being taken operationally in the systems that many of you are responsible for controlling and owning and enabling. Uh, and so think through how that strategy actually makes its way into the way that you're driving your organization or contributing to the overall agenda of the company. We're here to help. Uh, part of what we formed is what's called the Experience Management Institute. Uh, and the XM Institute is not focused on a particular piece of technology. It's focused on enabling skills, strategy around experience management in order to be able to help you differentiate within the market and the industry that you're in. And the second thing is, is when you think about experience management, think about how you centralize access to this type of data. The data around understanding the human beings that you all serve. But centralize it in a way where it's also available enterprise-wide as part of all of the operating environments that each of you are, are running. And our job at SAP is to make that increasingly easy for you to make as part of your operating environments, whether it's customer, connected customer experience, whether it's in the HR area, whether it's part of supply chain, that's our job. But we're also here to help with respect to the other things that I described. Great. Welcome to your first Sapphire. I hope you have a great week. Thanks, Zig, for joining us Thank today. Thank you very much. Zig Zarefin, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Customer experience means everything to Callaway Golf. That's evident in their mission to empower all of their customers to play better and enjoy the game more. If there's a Mount Rushmore of golf innovators, Eli Calloway would certainly be on that Mount Rushmore. And he began with the idea that there were new ways to think about the sport. And so he really ushered in a brand new era of high technology and science into the game. The amount of technology that is involved we have aerodynamics engineers, we have materials engineers. So there really is a lot of science, a lot of measurement. Our R&D group's very large and we continue to leverage both technology tools and, and traditional measurement devices to figure out how to find every edge, every advantage, every way to leverage new materials. I'm allowed the latitude to really utilize resources, uh, utilize my network, uh, utilize my, my past experience with business processes to get the job done. You know, we're out there looking to solve complex problems, and that's what ASUG helps us do. Having that hunger, that desire to come in every day and continue to put our best effort into uh, products or services that make those people's experiences in the sports that we compete in better is what drives us and I think what sets us apart from the people we compete against. Value and what we deliver in technology, we can talk to ourselves and pat ourselves on the back and say, sure, we did a great project on time, but if it didn't deliver the impact, it, it's not valuable to the business. And that goes back to a core tenet of what I, I really push my team on is to understand the value. When we get into SAP is that's when we're commercializing these things. So we have to now take those cool innovations and designs and turn them into something repetitive. What really gets me going is people. At the end of the day, IT is IT, processes are processes, industries are industries, but the people keep it exciting. Technology and the solutions that we have that are sort of behind the scenes in a lot of cases really is the glue that keeps all of this together. The values that we share present day are exactly the same as the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship that Eli Calloway had almost 40 years ago. Great organization. Let's give a round of applause to Callaway. Part of her journey to your personal best here this week has to include a visit to the ASUG hub. Our chairman of the board, Mark LeClaire, is there right now. Mark, where are you? Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing hey, I'm well. How are you the doing? ASUG hub. There is so much to see over here, everyone. 
the Influence Center, the meetups, the digital wall, the Spotlight Theater, and I'm standing here in front of the Find Your ASUG Path Now, and the ASUG staff is here to help you. I just took the short quiz a minute ago, Jeff, and found out that I'm a big picture thinker. Now I've got this button, and I can connect with other ASUG members that think just like me. You know, Jeff, we're sharing personal best stories this afternoon. I've got a big fish story to tell you, a really big fish. The thing about catching a fish like this is confidence and perseverance. For the last nine years, I've been catching fish up in northern Canada with my son. The first few years, we caught some fish. Not like this guy. Those first few years, we really kind of didn't know what we were doing. But every year, we learned a bit more from other fishermen. And now this is what we're catching. You know, when I first started working with SAP as a customer, I knew about as much as I did the very first time that I went to Canada fishing. Very little. While I had the confidence I, to know I would ultimately succeed, I knew I needed others' help. Like many of you, I'm a knowledge seeker, and ASUG helped me get the knowledge I needed. This is my 10th annual conference, my first full year as chairman of the ASUG board. I've met and continue to meet people here who have helped shape my success. There is a tremendous amount of satisfaction when you're at your best. That big fish is out there for each one of you. Now, speaking of one that got away, look who's here with me now. Hey, Cheryl, welcome hey, Mark, it's back. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming over. What do you think of the hub? I think the hub is absolutely amazing. There's so many things to see and do. Awesome, awesome. I see you got a button. Yes, I have a button. And you took the quiz. Yes, I took the quiz, and it was so quick and simple. It showed I was a change agent, and that's exactly what I do at work. I make changes. You know, that's fantastic. I'm glad that helped you out. Great. Hey, I'll tell you what, Bear Grylls is about to come back on. So we'll send it back over to Jeff here, okay? Okay. Awesome. Folks, as I said, there is a tremendous amount of satisfaction when you're at your best. Hey, Jeff, I'm going to send it back over to you. Thanks, Mark. Let's give Cheryl a round of applause. She had no idea. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending this afternoon. This week, challenge yourself to be the best you can be. Be your personal best. Have a great evening. Have a great couple of days. Have fun. And let's be careful out there, folks. Thank you.